Aloha and Bulavanaka, everyone. Welcome to our Digital Pacific Live session today. It's wonderful to see people joining us uh, in the Zoom live session uh, and as well also on Facebook. Um, my name is Tim Kong and I'm the program manager of the Pacific Virtual Museum. Uh, and today our very special guests are the staff uh, and um, the staff at the Tuvalu National Library and Archives. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Tapatu, who is going to be our host uh, for today. Uh, Talofa Koto, and welcome to our webinar. Very excited to be um, with our two Valuan colleagues. Um, to open up the session, could we ask our Matua to please open up with a prayer? <laughs> Mm. Um, so just going to introduce myself, uh, uh, my name is Tapatu Kororaia and I'm the Digital Pacific Engagement Manager. So my role is to reach out to galleries, museums, archives and libraries around the world to get them to share their Pacific collections to our website. Um, and to make sure that these collections are accessible to our Pacific communities. And so then we can uh, reconnect with some of them. Um, so the agenda for um, today's webinar is we're going to hand over to our Tuvalu National Library staff to share a bit about what their role is um, and a bit about the organisation. We get to see some of the collections and do a tour of the building. And then we're going to hand over to our Mato, who's going to be sharing a bit, a bit, a bit about um, Tuvalu and culture. So I'll hand it over to Noor. Would you be able to introduce your staff and share a little bit where they're from and what you do at Tuvalu National Library and Archives? Noor? Hey, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Noor Petueli. I am the chief librarian and archivist here in Tuvalu National Library. Might just need to um, mute while 
mute on the laptop yeah. before we keep introducing. I think yeah. that might. Kalau fa, kalau fa tak ko mama tak faham, atau se kemasi me nampaknya, oh tapi tulang ayam tu itu yang paling susah cuci, atau se asisten librarian, selain nono susu kini ayam itu, maka maka te avenga o information mo tiki pa ang pagte mete mete na tuwalo sa kaunga mapagte masing ay kung ano ite office at ni mama thank you everybody my name is Alvin from the island of Punaputi I am eighty seven years old I am the oldest man on like this community Oh, lovely to meet you all. Um, lovely to meet you all. Thanks for introducing yourselves and where you're from and what you do here at the library. Um, sorry for the bit of the technical audio difficulties there. Um, so I think we're going to see what the collections that you've got in your library. So Noor, would you be able to kind of tell us what you've got in your collection and what um, what your role is with um, preserving these important collections. So here at the National Archive, we have a rare collection, basically focused on the history of Tuvalu. So we have monographs. And also we have uh, archival documents, some audio visual. But most, most of the records we have here are government official files, correspondence and archival material as well. Awesome. So what kind of, what are the collections that you've got on the table there? Okay, what we have here. So these are the agreements for each island here in Tuvalu. This agreement allow the Tuvalu people to be under the protectorate of, of the British colony. Mm -hmm. So we have here our regional. And uh, probably these are the oldest uh, 
archival documents we have. Hmm. The significance of this document is that they, they have uh, they, they they have recordings of uh, people who at the time have uh, agreed to sign their island to become under the protection of uh, the British colony. Hmm. So we have so, the, so there how many documents are one for each island? So is that is there nine documents or eight documents? Eight documents. Eight documents. This one, one island, that Nanumea, and we have Nanumanga, we have Ebdal, Nui, Waitupu, Muketau, Naputi and Nukulaila. Awesome. And um, when you opened up the page, it said that there was, is it the endangered? Um, when you opened up the first page. So who did you work with for that? I think it says the endangered project. Um, so have these been digitized? The yes, it's been digitized under the endangered archive program. Oh, yeah. And who's, project. who was that with? Who did you work with with that project? It was funded under the British Library and it was later continued by the Pacific Manuscript. The oh. There are two consultants were here, one from Australia and the other one from New Zealand. Nice. Um, we just got a question that came through. Um, do all the islands speak the same language or are there different dialects? Uh, all islands speak the same language, but they have different uh, pronunciation of the, of the dialect. Oh, okay. Except for, for this island, yeah. they don't speak Tuvalu. What language do they speak? Probably Kiribati. More like Kiribati. Oh, nice. It's like a combination of Kiribati and probably uh, Samoan or Tuvalu. Um. So why? Um. How do you guys look after these documents? Okay. Where are they kept? They kept here at the in a pottery. Yeah. I'm walking right to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a small place. Here. So this is where all the the archival documents are held. A small repository room. So what are the some of the things on the shelf that you've got that you can tell us about or show us around? Most of these boxes, they are colonial uh, correspondent, land titles. Land titles. We have birth records. Um, do you have many visitors coming into the library and archives and what are the main things that they come and research? Most of our visitors or recently users come to the archives to search for their land titles. Oh, land titles, yeah. Land title is like the big issue. Mm -hmm. And this room is about to fall apart. It's already leaking. So oh, we have no. We have one more aircon pulling this place. Yeah. Yeah, but most of the people come here and search for their land, land titles. Land titles, yeah, that's... And some of them, they want to search their genealogy. Mm -hmm. 
So we we also have seniority record. Yeah. Birth record. Um, Noah, what do you most enjoy about your job? Well, reading a colonial document, like the, the most uh, enjoyable thing, also reading yeah. some official correspondence. You know, by reading this thing, like you, you travel back. And feel what these people have done. Yeah. Like, what is that for them? Oh, we've got a question that came in um, from Rupiti. Um, knowing that Tuvalu is very hot, does the heat affect the documents in any way, and how do you maintain their quality? Yes. Like this document. Yeah. It is caused by the heat. Originally, this paper were white. Yeah. But now they are in different color. Mm. Is there anything that you can try and prevent the change in coloration with the resource that you have? Right now, we don't have much resource. To address this issue, the only thing we have managed to do is install yeah. a proper a condition. Mm. And so, yeah. And so, digitization is a pretty important part to your role to try and yeah. preserve these documents. In terms of preservation, we were blessed to receive this digitization machine from uh, the Rich to Rich project. Oh, awesome. So whenever uh, government uh, close by arrive, what we do, we digitize them and create a new box for them and put it in the report. But given that the space is very small, we usually advise them to hold on to their boxes and we try to find space yeah. to put these archival boxes inside. Yeah. I think the way forward for the world will be the, an electronic archive that we can operate with several more space. Awesome. Um, we just got another question that came through. Um, how do you inherit land over in Tuvalu? And if you want to just put the phone closer to your mouth more. How do, how do we what? Inherit land in Tuvalu. Inherit? Yeah. So um, how is land, how do you get land in Tuvalu? Okay, land, land here in Tuvalu, it has to come by blood. Oh, uh, yeah. We don't sell land here. Yeah. There's, there's, I think there's some uh, part of the island at least to, or mostly part of the capital and some portion of uh, land in each island are leased by the government. But to own land here or inherit, you have the land must come down from the bloodline. Yeah. And are male and female able to own land in Tuvalu? Um, males and females, are you are they both able to own land or inherit land? Or does yeah, it go? Yeah. Oh, cool. But, but according to the, the Tuvalu Lands Code, I think the male is, uh, have much share than the, the female one. Yeah. In terms of distribution. Unless there's, there is a, there's no male in the, the bloodline, then the female then the female gets passed on to them. Oh, that's really interesting. And um, we've got another message just come through. Um, 
We also got a comment from Catherine saying that those boxes look familiar, Noah. We have other Western Pacific High Commission records in the same boxes here at the University of Auckland, although most are now in new boxes. So those boxes have traveled, have the same kind of boxes yeah. in the Pacific. Um, another question that just came through, oh, Noah, do you want to turn your camera to face you? And are there any future plans in terms of storage? Yeah, that's better. Are there any future plans in terms of storage for your for your facility? Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, plans in trying to to build a new building for for the Tuvalu National Library now. Yeah. But I guess it, it depends on the government priorities and government keep on like new government comes with their, their new mm. priorities. So we still have to wait and be patient when that's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, in, in 2017, we did manage to secure a project that uh, we see the building of the World National Library. So we managed to do only up to the documentation phase. No, no. Concept, conceptual design. No. We can show you, but it's just that uh, it's too costly to build that kind of building here. Yeah. So still. Have oh, we just got an. Another question comes through. How do you decide what material to digitize? Is it based on what is most need of preservation, i.e. deterioration or requested? How fragile, yeah. We usually select materials to be digitized depending on the nature. And so the, the most fragile one are the one usually go first. But they are the one that we need more attention. Yeah. Um, how many collections do you have? How many documents do you know roughly that you guys hold? Right now, uh, archival documents we use to be approximately 200 boxes. Mm -hmm. Regional ones. And then from yeah. the 1800 right up to 1974. Awesome. And then, so once you digitize your collections, where where are they being stored? What kind of system do you look, how do you hold those collections? On a hard drive? We managed to secure a project with the rich with uh, like a project run here in Tuvalu. They want the Tuvalu National Library to have an a e library. Oh, e -library. So this e library will act as a, a e archive as well. Most of the electronic copies that we are going to put in will be posted in Australia. It's a company called the Presenting. Mm. So going back to the question that uh, did we manage to find a oh, oh, storage? So this is what the the archive should look like. Wow. That's awesome. That will so yeah. we have something like this. This will solve the the problem we have right now. Mm. So this building was designed to act like a free space uh, building. Mm. So we have a, a cultural center that acts as a museum. Cool. Then we have a library on this side and the archives of that side. 
it, it also designed to be a uh, evacuation center during a cyclone. Yeah. And that's the story of it. Oh, that's so cool. And so would that the proposed location so cool would be? Have... Everyone's thinking that the building is pretty cool and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um is the Tuvaluan language is there any so what kind of new items have come to the the library at the moment? The library. We yeah. just this year we received uh, this book. Oh donated by the government of New Zealand. So we have one book for each island. The book is written in English and it also has a translation in Tuvalu. Awesome. And so what are these books based on each of these islands? So are they legends or stories from yeah. those islands? It's like stories from each island. Nice. Also they are unique uh, cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. Um, has many of the children come in to see these and read these books? Yes, um, especially on Thursday. Like today, this is the, the most packed the uh, children will be here at the like... library. Oh, awesome. So is, today is their video, video program. Day. Nice. Um, no, is there any particular item that's your favorite in the archives? What's your favorite, most special item that you have? Favorite item? Yeah. And um, what's this book that you're showing us? Oh, so all the months in Coral Islands signed it. Mm. And how old is this book? Oh, 1899. So why is this book special to you? Okay, why? Oh, this is my grandmother's grandpa. Oh, awesome. I named my son after him. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then what was, what's your son's name and your grandfather's name? Can you read it? It's written there. Well, it's been, oh, oh. Oh, awesome. <laughs> um, I think we should, if we want to hear from our um our mato oh, now, wow. the elder. Yeah. Um, do you want to ask him some questions about um Tuvalu and his experience? Well, <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, we can. Maybe if we, um, we probably won't. Can we try and get that? Send five plus. No, no, if we just get the elder to maybe to speak to the laptop, is it? Oh, and you got the camera. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. can you hear that, Brian? It's it's like when you see someone so beautiful and you said like oh they can eat that girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've just got a question in terms of recording oral tradition has he ever been a part of it well I, I don't know about oral project if it have ever been done here but there are some scholars who have studied here in Tuvalu like uh, Kurt Koch from uh, German. I think he, he had many audio recordings in uh, oral tradition as well, recorded here in Suvalu, but none of them are here with us in the archives. I think it, it was his own personal collection, but we'd love to have those here. Excellent. Um, we've got a how has he, um, what's his favorite part about Tuvalu and culture? Yes, ま、さ、私やってる。で、ま、で、え、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま
but he he met the queen here in Tuvalu when she came for the royal visit. He was the one who gave him the local drink, the coconut okay. juice. That's so he cool. chopped it, put it out and gave it to the to the queen. Wow, and he didn't spill it. Sigimalini de Avena. How long did it take to prepare his dance for the, the Queen? He said it took took him like half an hour to get himself prepared for the, for the dance. <laughs> oh, expert dancer then don't need that long to practice. <laughs> he said he, he won the competition. Oh whoa. And so was he twelve years old? Oh, um, what kind of food was prepared for when the queen came over? <laughs> he said he was not that the, the, the people who prepared the food, but because he was getting ready himself to to cut the coconut juice for the, for the queen. Mm -hmm. um, we just got a question coming out, come through from Suliana. Are there any plans to record the elders for their stories? And where would you store them? Yes, there have been many of plans trying to, to, to do oral project here in Tuvalu. Mm. Uh, the problem is that we need equipment and we need more funding to, to do this kind of project. And yeah. after, if we do this project, where will we store them? It's another story. Yeah. We really want to do you know, this kind of thing, but we we will be wasting a lot of effort if we don't know where we're going to preserve yeah. or put it. Because here, archives is very small. We don't mm -hmm. have any more space. So even our, our staff are squeezing the space of the working area just to accommodate some space for, for the children and, yeah. and the books. Yeah, fair enough. Um, another question for the elder. Um, what has, does he have any grandchildren and children and what has he taught them about the Tuvaluan culture? Has he been teaching them dance and things like that? What are the, some of the stories that he shares with his grandchildren? He said he's been trying to teach them, but yeah. no one ever come close to what he had performed during uh -huh. his time. <laughs> so, uh, grandson, they don't have girlfriends because they can't dance <laughs> like him. <laughs> Is that how he got his wife or from his dancing? Yes, actually, then Yeah, he said that, like, part of it. Eh? But there are a lot of girls come to him just because of his dancing. <laughs> When his when is when was the last time he danced? 
The last time he danced last year was oh. a traditional feast at the, the island, the capital, and he, you know, he feel like he wants to stand up and he danced. And right now he said he can perform the uh, dance at this age. Oh, you must be very fit. And you'll be up there dancing. So in his <laughs> um, is there um, so is there a holiday tomorrow? Can you talk about um, the yes. celebrations? Yep. It'll be a public holiday tomorrow for the celebration of the 43rd Independence Day for Tuvalu. Yeah. Again, on Monday, we have a public holiday. Yep. So it'll be. Nice. I've um, just got another question. Um, can he tell us about the changes that he's noticed in his lifetime about Tuvalu? What are the changes that he's seen in Tuvalu? <laughs> ตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัว
a lot of things have changed then is he so is he still encouraging people to learn the traditional ways and planting again and and things like that encouraging his family to do that <laughs> Do we have some question there? Yeah. Um, so we've got one. Um, what does he remember about the first Independence Day? Does he remember? <laughs> He said he was not here during the first Independence Day. He was at, in the Ocean Island, working oh. in the British Force Trade Company. Oh, interesting. Um, so what, what, who, what was the relationship with Tuvalu before Independence Day? What was the history before you became independent? So, before Independence Day, Independence. Before. Yeah. What? Who we associate associated with, and everything like that. Did that help? Is that good? I, I couldn't hear you properly. Um. So before Independence, before Tuvalu became independent, um, what was the island like? Yeah, before independence, uh, Tuvalu was with the the Gilbert's, so we, we call the Gilbert's and Ellis Island colony. And most of the, the developments are based in the headquarters, which is in in Gilbert's, Tarawa. And most of the people here in Tuvalu were working Ocean Island. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And the phosphate as well. During the phosphate uh, mining company. Mm. And Mr. Siyashi here was happened to be one of the workers who went to, to work at the, the phosphate company. I worked there for 20 years. Oh, at Ocean Island. Yeah. Hard work? Oh, very hard work, yeah. Not easy. No. Um, what, so where was the phosphate going to? So when you were digging it, who, where was it getting transported to? Yeah, we give it on the The phosphate is transport to New Zealand and Australia, even the UK, mm. England. Mm. So that was for twenty. When did you when did you start that job? How old were you? Um, so, some people are asking here for me to answer that question, but I lose track which question. There's too many questions. Um, so the one from Sam, can you read that one? No? Uh, when yeah, the Sam, yeah. Sam was brought there by the Sam came here, when they brought the, the good news or what, what they call the, uh, the gospel, it was the London Missionary Society initiated the idea to bring them here. So most of the, the pastors arrived here are from Samoan. They bring their own Samoan Bible with them and the hymn, the hymn book as well. So back then, everyone from the the age from the age, from the ages, I uh, know from the year 1900 up to 1960s, I guess, they are all speak Samoan fluently, oh. and they can read, they can sing. Even Mr. Siaosi here, who used to be. Uh, 
someone him a singer. So everyone, yes, everyone speak uh, someone. Oh. Um, the first time uh, came here in 1865. Uh, 1865. 1865. Yeah. But he, the, the, the man from Baratonga landed in Nubulai, in 1861. Hmm. What's the religion, my, uh, the religion over in Tuvalu, most common? Religion, mostly 90% are Methodists, <clears throat> 90% or almost 98%. Hmm. It's the main uh, dominant religion here in Tuvalu. Um. I got another question come through. Around 2,000 people have returned to the islands due to COVID and lockdown. Has this impacted Funa Futi and the pressure on resources? I think yes. It, it, it does impact the, the resources here in the capital. But, that, uh, but the government have done a, a pretty good job in managing uh, all the supermarkets and you know, mm. rationing it uh, so that people can have equal equal resources or equal uh, amount of food to be purchased from the from these outlets. Mm -hmm. um, got another question come through from Leone. Is um, since these are a close relationship with Kiribati. Um, is there a lot of Kiribati archives in your collection? Yeah. <clears throat> During the separation, there's this guy called uh, Richard Overy. He, he used to work as the, the Kiribati and Ellis Island uh, archivist. He was the one who deal with the separating Kiribati and Tuvalu archival documents. Oh, okay. And, but, but recently, we had a project with him who had done the EAP project. So up to the end of the project, he advised us to go back to Kiribati and retrieve some of the leftover boxes that were not transported during the, the separation. Mm. So in 2017 and 2018, oh, 2017 only, we managed to mm. make, make two visits to Kiribati mm. and retrieve like almost 20, more than 20 boxes oh. of archival from Kiribati, mm. all mm. here with us. And there are still some more boxes left in Kiribati and due to funding and we caught up by COVID and we didn't go back and get the rest. Yeah. Um, see, any other questions anyone wants to ask our elder or about the Tuvalu National Library and Archives? I'm not sure if it's a question or look at it. Is this a question or a comment? Tali aku, tali aku aku fisili kona. Sorry, my two <laughs> Oh, no, clarifying is earlier question. Thank you. Um, is there any questions that you would like to ask your elder, Noor? What's your fondest memory about living in Tuvalu growing up? Um, and what did his elder... Please, can this lady... Can go to New Zealand and join you. 
Sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Come and have a look at our archives and help us write things that share the same stories that you have about them. Um, what did your grandparents teach you when you were growing up? What was the most uh, most important thing that you you cherish from what they taught you? Yeah, he said the only thing that he will never forget is the uh, when the war happened. Oh. Second. Mr. Siyasi here is uh, the lone survivor now. And, you know, during that, like, he had a fresh memory of what happened back then. Yeah. I think that's the only thing he said that he mm. would never forget from his uh, youth uh, memories. Sorry, Noah, I was just going to ask um, one of our guests in the Zoom uh, wanted to just ask a question verbally. So I'll just open up and allow them to talk. Uh, so, Ilayla. Okay. Talofan. <laughs> Then I do sang a kirunga meta when Valamini, Gimafaya from Matala Mali, my men, Leana do sang and if I may sit the Ukangam Tonga Luenga and Nela sit in a tena, then a Kafrata Sikirunga in Matonga Luenga. Tells the Asinau Asinau Ilonga, Yemen, Iloa, Poe, Manaco, Faramatala, Ewinga, the two langa or Toe and Valamini, the Artilina, Yoke, Pui Pui for a lay. Kai Fakam Kifakati Fakangang, a tail or tattoo for a two valo, pui pui to and valamine. The Madame Dinas Tabwe Fang and I, I get in it. I depend on the name Matu or Hainan and Tai. That depends on the two. Matu of the Puni, I have a tiny the case <laughs> Hey. Yeah, you can answer the question, uh, Diana. Fafai, Sialsi, Ed Ewi, Etonu, Ite, Kilonga, Mwasa, Maimua, Tuvalu, Ka, Ngalo, Ilalo, Te, Tai, Fanaka, Ne, Ka, Ite, Vai, Tai, Migo, Ne, Goti, Ne, Te, Ka, Se, Ato, Tu, Sanga, Ne, Ne, Fai, Kilunga, I, Tupulanga, Tupua, Ke, Tuvalu, Te, Faka, Ate, Inga, Orto, Iloa, Ia 
Yun yung ulang matu, yung ulang araw sila, pakatuwag. Di tayo dyan eh, matu ko ulang araw, gimme ko na yung may pagmaining sila, mga stari, at hindi kayo ko na yung may, kung ito may magparagami na kaya ko daw, hindi pa ka tao. Nila matu, yung may lawaw, kaya mo to pato ah. Di yung ulang araw matu. At dyan natin may dyan, ikutaw ako, ikutaw ako, ako matu ko kayo dyan. Di ba ikutaw dyan eh. Ay lola ni ko tu ya tu baru kita ten buat polik saya ikse ola leyo tinalau ke tengah tak ye yo de topi ngola Afta la si si ausi no afa matala ni ko ya de tala de talia ta dia si ausi ai fa katangi ta ngana palang yo fa kai lo kito Isi ko na isa ay malamalama. Tau, tau tali tayo na nifay may kiyaw. Ito ko nga na nisa ay naakulay me. Sa yala ko te, ikaw ako te, ito kura ma, pakapala. Na ay me ako ay, pakaloilo niya ako ito, mapaypay pa pakapala niya. Yeah, Raya. Yeah, she was talking about the the issue of climate change here in Tuvalu. He said he was one of the vocalists for, for the old people here in Tuvalu mm. in, in projects that usually come and interview him. So he usually tell them of what he has seen and experienced about the, the problem that the Tuvalu people are facing right now. Mm -hmm. like most of the people are getting eaten or taken away by the sea. And it's, a, it's an ongoing issue right now as we speak. And he said that this problem have been causing from uh, gas emissions from your country, a bigger mm. country. Yeah. So he said that some scientific uh, prediction already been revealed to him that uh, in 50 years time, in 50 years time, Tuvalu will be no longer inhabitable here. So he said, "Well, where will you people want us to go? Mm. When will you people?" Thinking of stopping those uh, fossil fuel or what they call, it. Mm. and uh, these uh, changes have driven the Tuvaluan people to go back to the old and black way of life, start planting trees and building their own gardens, so to have their food security ready when something happened, they they have their own food. Mm -hmm. Mm. Thank you, Noah. I just have uh, one question from Lupetti, so I'll just allow her, them to talk. Thank you, Lupetti. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I was going to wait till the, this, because my question is different. I was going to wait till if anybody else wanted a question. Should I go now? Uh, just let me know. Uh, oh, okay. I'll just ask this one because Jeremiah has just asked. Thank you, Lupetti, yeah, yeah, because this yeah. links. So, Jeremiah, uh, Noah, this is for you, I think. With regards to the impact of climate change, are there plans or what are some of the plans for moving archival materials, whether physically or digitally? Well, physically, we haven't had a plan for it. The only plan we have for physical archive material is to build a new building and you know, raise it about like two meters from ground level. That's the only plan we have right now, but digitally, we already have uh, moved our digital uh, collection to the British Library and also with the, the Pacific Manuscript. And uh, with the project of the Rich to Reef, which, which is on, still ongoing, we we have managed to secure a hosting partner in Australia called the Presentium Systems. They will do the, they will host uh, digital images of uh, archival records for for the people of Tuvalu and the Tuvalu National Library and Archives. Oh, thank you, Noah. Uh, Lupetti, would you like to go ahead? Uh, sure, thank you. Um, yeah, to Lolo de de Faletato, uh, Talofa Tena, uh, Chassi, uh, Penafoki, uh, Noah, more Tonga Ruenago Tona, Gofata Statone, 
the facility for my I, I've always been interested uh, I've always been interested in the the changes in the language in Tuvalu ne mai te kama tangalo e te when was it 1865 te va unga dala ele kana mo anangana uh kuka ele ne na anangana maori uh also the kiribati language and then the samoan language uh my my question to Siasi is uh, uh what was his experience going through the different languages was it uh like was it uh, a big thing uh, or was it just a few people that spoke it or you know <laughs> or did he see the changes in the language the shifts in the language uh, no uh, then i thought that will facilitate yeah. that i'll sit down at the computer dictionary to valo the language board at the ngana pai pati e pai pa jiro te fenu te nangana te pai o poi a ba te ngana tuki te nei ta pai ke ke ta si ko te ngana e ba ba te la o te ngana da o te nei tuki te tuki ta te na te ngana da e ba ba o te ngana tuki o te ngana pai pa ti pai pa ti ro ti lo te ngana te na pe lo se is tu la ko nei te nei te na e pai pa ti ro te ti lo te ngana te na te na fenu o sa o to ma te na a te na ko te ngana tuki e tan pai lo ke ta si tinga na dia pa ma ai tinga na dia ai tu si ta ko ta to te na ta ka no ko ma te tinga na tu wa lo yeah yeah thank you no a ti ko fa ma ta le ne ko e no of that right so as he was lopetti was asking about the changes of the language given that tuvalu was with the kirbers and samoan and uh Shiaoshi said he was uh, a member of the language board, the Tuvalu language board committee so during their time trying to decide which language that the uh, Tuvalu will use and they, they found out that there's, there's there's only one written language that all Tuvalu should use is the translation that have been used in the bible oh okay be used as the written language but yeah. the, the Tuvalu spoken language each island will main, maintain or use their own dialect mm -hmm. there's no you know, there's no one uniform uh, dialect that all Tuvalu people can use yeah just that the written language is we use all we use the one that's been used in the bible <laughs> Because I was just asking him that because uh, he was from the capital, did he notice that yeah, is there any in the, the Funafuti dialect mm -hmm. and she also said that now the Funafuti dialect is gone it's, no one speaks the language right now not a dead dialect which is very slow from the spoken Funafuti language right now and he said there's a, a more beautiful sound language called the Nukulailai language mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. I agree. <laughs> um, has anybody else got any questions that they would like to ask? Um, or else we can close the session. Potentially yes. have another one. Any other questions? Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So this is, uh, thank you from Catherine. Um privileged to join you all for this Talanoa session. See the archives and meet you meet everyone. Manuel Tiaso. Oh, thank you, Catherine.
Tim. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, as Jeremiah just said in the chat, Vinaka Vakalevu, uh, and thank you so much. Um, just thinking of all the different points uh, that you've covered today and uh, sharing your your building, uh, Noah, and meeting your staff and uh, talking to Siausi. I'm struck by the theme of our Tuvalan Language Week here in Aotearoa is um, embracing our culture uh, and a more secure, vibrant future. And I realize, recognize that Tuvalu uh, at the, I suppose, the edge of this ocean uh, and at the edge of the impact of climate change, um, that its future and its vibrant culture are um, something we definitely need to embrace. And we just wanted to um, acknowledge uh, each of you uh, in Tuvalu there and thank you for sharing your space with us today. And it's been a real privilege to uh, share the work you do and the stories. Thank you uh, uh, to your elder um, and for uh, the work you're doing. Also quite humbling when, you know, when you were showing us the room, um, Noah, just, you know, to see the leaks and to see those things and to, um, I suppose, be reminded again of the the um, challenges, the very real, practical, physical challenges that um, you have there in your um, in your organization and with your staff. So thank you for all the work you do. Um, and thank you for taking up or giving us an hour or a bit more of your time um, on, on your Thursday today. So um, I'd like to just ask uh, if, um, as we wrap up and uh, say thank you, um, maybe ask uh, if Mr. Siausi would like to close uh, in prayer. Uh, and then we will um, say goodbye. This session will be, it's been on Facebook Live as well, so anyone can share it, but we'll also uh, save the recording and post it on YouTube. Um, yes. But we'll... Okay, he will do the closing prayer for us. Okay, thank you, Vinaka. Thank you. So, so I might Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Noah. Take care.